So you say right now, President Trump is only at a number three out of six, meaning you need you would have six elements for an incumbent to lose the White House. Correct. Um, what are the chances? And you don't have to be percentage wise here, but colloquially, Correct. what are what are the chances that he would, uh, I guess, lose three more of those elements or three more of those factors in the next year? Well, if the Democrats don't grow a spine and take care of business and try to turn keys that are in their control through trying to nail the scandal key through an impeachment investigation or nominating a truly exciting, charismatic candidate, not Joe Biden, uh, then Trump's chances are very good. But we have a Democratic Party that doesn't seem to have a spine, that they're you know waving their fingers in the winds, hemming and hawing, backing and filling. They can't win that way. You cannot win by playing not to lose. And I've been screaming that to the Democrats and they seem too stubborn to listen. Right, they're, maybe they're too busy virtue signaling uh, to listen to any anything that they don't want to hear. Are there any of the 23 candidates who are running for the Democratic nomination right now, are there any of them that you believe would swing uh, these key factors in favor of the Democrats and away from President Trump? It's a great question. And the answer is I never prejudge. One word I'd love to eliminate from the English language is electability. You don't know who's electable until the process plays out. And we've got this democratic debate coming up. Will someone, you know, be a Ronald Reagan with the great one-liners or Barack Obama with inspirational rhetoric? I don't know, but that's what the challenge is. You're not going to inspire people with a lot of wonky policy proposals, although I love them as a professor. You've got to ignite the people's imagination the way Ronald Reagan did for Republicans in 1980 and Barack Obama did for Democrats in 2008.